replace me with your own words, a conservative psychologist observing the Senate hearing would likely focus on Senator John Kennedy's attempt to provide a detailed account of a 21-week abortion. The psychologist may view Kennedy's intentions as an effort to bring attention to the emotional and moral aspects of abortion, emphasizing the pain experienced by the fetus during the procedure. But don't miss, what is dilation and evacuation, and how is it performed? Why does Senator Kennedy emphasize the absence of pain medication during the abortion procedure? How do the senators involved in the discussion express their views on the abortion debate? Let's take a baby at 21 weeks. Hold up my... This is a baby at 21 weeks, okay? Let's take a baby at 21 weeks. Hold up. This is a baby at 21 weeks, okay? The focus here is on acknowledging the presence and stages of development of the unborn baby with the goal of establishing a strong emotional bond with the child before birth. Um, the baby can feel pain, right? And the baby can feel pain, right? This narrative focuses on articulating the distress that a newborn may experience, highlighting the ability to understand the suffering of an unborn infant and evoking empathy from the audience. Yes. And the baby's pretty developed, right? And the baby's pretty developed, right? The various stages of fetal development, aiming to evoke empathy for the unborn by depicting it as a unique and advanced being comparable to a fully developed human. Yes. And do you know the name of the procedure that the doctor would use to abort that baby at 21 weeks? I'm not a doctor, but I believe it's a DNR. It's called dilation and evacuation. Is that right? As far as I understand, yeah. Yeah. And first, uh, the doctor would, would, would dilate um, the cervix, and then the doctor would take what's called a, they, the doctor would call it a sofa clamp. It's really a pair of pliers with sharp teeth on the end. And without giving the baby any pain medication, the doctor would go through the vagina, through the uterus, and start tearing the baby apart. Without giving the baby any pain medication, the doctor would go through the vagina, through the uterus, and start tearing the baby apart. The explicit explanation aims to shock the audience, revealing the severity of the procedure and encouraging empathy for the unborn baby's experience. Is that right? As far as I understand the procedure. Yeah, and she might start with the legs and pull them out, and the arms and pull them out, right? And then she might go for the for the heart or the spine and just pull the baby out piece by piece. Is that right? Without giving the baby pain medication. That's what I understand the procedure to be. Okay. But then you got to get the head out. The baby's dead, but maybe not. Maybe it's still in pain. But then you, you got to get the head out. But then you got to get the head out. The baby's dead. Maybe not. Maybe it's still in pain. But then you got to get the head out the deep emotional impact of a situation, and raises questions about the ethical aspects involved, even if the scenario involves the unfortunate death of an infant. And even with the cervix dilated, you got to get the head out, which is hard. So then the doctor would go in and, and, and use those pliers to crush the baby's head. Is that right? Not, not as far as I And then she'd pull the head out, the crushed skull out, right? And then she'd pull the head out, the crushed skull out, right? The portrayal is deliberately crafted to provoke a strong emotional response, highlighting the brutality and absence of compassion inherent in the abortion procedure. Mm -hmm. Senator Kennedy, your time has expired here. Well, you gave, you gave the others waiting. plenty of time, Mr. Chairman. Just letting you know, your time's expired. Okay. You have other senators waiting. Well, you also, I was waiting when you were letting others. You, I'm sorry you don't want to hear about what happens no, I don't think anybody in an actual going, abortion, I but that's, I thought over. that was what we were here to talk about. No one else has gone over. Is, Some of the witnesses went a little bit long, but on both sides, so... I thought we were I'm here about protecting mothers and killing babies. I'm going to turn to Senator Stabenow and... Well, I'm Phillips. sorry you I'm don't want to hear it. had to take like place in front of you. Roster here. My apologies. In a charged Senate hearing, Senator Kennedy's vivid depiction of a 21-week abortion sparks emotional clashes with Democrats. The attempt to highlight the fetus's potential pain becomes a focal point, leading to interruptions and accusations of fear-mongering. The clash underscores the deeply polarized perspectives on abortion, with emotional testimony from a mother who defends her choice further fueling the debate.
Senator John Kennedy's portrayal of abortion procedures is an evocative narrative, stirring intense emotions and vividly illustrating the intricacies of the process. While deemed essential to convey the moral gravity of the situation, this approach isn't immune to criticism, accused of manipulation by relying on emotions rather than reasoned discourse. Senator John Kennedy's depiction accentuates the instinctual reality of abortion, unraveling the developmental stages and the fetus's pain. Conservative convictions on the sanctity of life and moral duty to shield the fetus add layers to the narrative, transforming it into an existential crisis, grappling with questions of life, death, and the intrinsic value of human existence post-abortion. The interplay between Senator John Kennedy and Senator Sheldon Whitehouse unravels the partisan essence of the debate. Kennedy's insistence on delving into abortion details clashes with White House's attempt to reduce the discourse, mirroring wider political divisions on the matter of censorship of opposing views favoring a pro-choice narrative. A struggle ensues for individual autonomy and freedom of expression against ideological conformity. Enter Mrs. Leslie Ford's testimony, infusing a human dimension into the debate and spotlighting the intricate realities faced by those wrestling with abortion decisions. Political discourse oversimplifies, neglecting the nuanced situations influencing reproductive choices. Ford's testimony serves as a poignant reminder of the real-world ramifications of abortion policies to agony and moral responsibility inherent in life-altering decisions. Senator John Kennedy's exchange with Mrs. Leslie Ford confronts the ethical dilemma within abortion procedures. His probing questions lead to a face-off with the chilling procedure details, sparking inquiries about the morality of such actions. An ethical duty emerges to confront the reality of abortion and advocate for restrictions, urging individuals to grapple with uncomfortable truths and wrestle with the existential implications of their actions. What do you think? I promote myself and my videos. Hello, I'm Bong Sim, a Canadian resident of Asian descent. During the day, I work as a professional counselor, and at night, I do Uber food delivery. Instead of speaking in my videos, I prefer to express myself through writing. In today's world, speaking the truth can have serious consequences, both for my professional life and personal well-being. That's why I'm choosing to pen down my thoughts and using a platform to share them on my behalf. Some people find my videos uninteresting, too strict, and they even criticize the appearance of the individuals featured, including their tiredness, Asian, or perceived flaws. I understand these concerns, but I genuinely believe in the purpose behind creating these videos. Unfortunately, recent Canadian legislation has resulted in the censorship of free speech and online content, and although Google hasn't explicitly admitted their involvement, I suspect they play a part in it. Despite my efforts to monetize my content on YouTube, I haven't been able to earn any income from it. I've tried three times, and all my attempts were rejected. They turned me down for reasons like lacking creativity, not having a recognizable face, or not having a distinct voice. Nevertheless, I've made several adjustments to my videos, hoping to overcome these challenges. If you share my belief and support what I'm doing, I would genuinely appreciate your backing.